Item number SCP-2935 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures The entrance of SCP-2935 has been sealed with concrete, and access to SCP-2935 is forbidden. Description. SCP-2935 is a space-time anomaly existing within a limestone cave beneath a cemetery near Joppa, Indiana. The cemetery, whose last interred individual died in 1908, was discovered by Foundation personnel after radio signals were discovered emanating from SCP-2935. See Addendum 2935.1 below. The SCP-2935 anomaly is a nearly exact replicate reality of modern Earth in the year 2016, with the primary exception being that all life, including both biological and non-biological, as well as any sentient entities, machines, computers, and other lifelike phenomena within SCP-2935 ended on April 20, 2016. Information gathered by the Mobile Task Force who initially entered SCP-2935 for reconnaissance purposes points to the conclusion that all life forms within SCP-2935 suddenly and without warning expired sometime between the hours of 0300-0400 Eastern Standard Time. The reason for this is currently uncertain. Addendum 2935.1 Discovery On April 28, 2016 at roughly 0500 Eastern Standard Time, a radio signal was detected by communications personnel at Site-81 near Bloomington, Indiana. This signal, although distorted and unintelligible, was traced to the unincorporated area of Joppa, Indiana near U.S. Interstate 70. Site-81 personnel in Indianapolis were dispatched to determine the source of the signal as per Foundation policy, and discovered SCP-2935 during their examination of the area. Upon initial entry into SCP-2935, the aforementioned personnel were uncertain that they had actually discovered an anomaly, instead believing their drone had exited the other side of the cave. This was quickly corrected during observation of the surrounding area, and upon picking up the undistorted radio broadcast they had been searching for. The broadcast, which appeared to have been repeating on a loop since April 20th, was an automated message originating from Site-81 within the SCP-2935 reality. The full transcription of the message is as follows. This is an automated emergency broadcast from the SCP Foundation and your national government. One or more of our sites is experiencing a communication breakdown, likely due to a containment breach of unknown magnitude. All citizens are ordered to stay in their homes as containment teams work to secure the breach. This message will broadcast from April 20, 2016 until… Message cuts out suddenly and then repeats. Afterwards, the Site-81 personnel contacted Site Command, Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13, Manifest Destiny, was immediately assigned to examination and exploration of SCP-2935. Addendum 2935.2 Exploration of SCP-2935 Exploration of SCP-2935 by MTF Epsilon-13 took place over four separate missions, three manned and one unmanned. During these missions, several artifacts and pieces of information were recovered, and a full list with descriptions is available in Addendum 2935.3. Exploratory Mission 2935.1 Codename Gauntlet Mission Abstract To survey and collect information and samples from the area directly surrounding the SCP-2935 insertion point. Assigned Task Force Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13 Manifest Destiny Four Members Additional Information The following is a transcript of audio and video recordings captured by MTF-E-13, who were tasked with surveying SCP-2935 immediately after its discovery. The four-man team, led by Agent Juno, spent just over one hour during the preliminary assessment of the anomaly. Begin Log Mics on? Check. 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 Command. We hear you. Confirm that all agents are at the insertion point. Confirmed. Alright. Proceed with insertion. Don't take any chances in there. We have no idea what you're going to see. Understood. Moving in. MTF-E-13 team enters SCP-2935. Travel through the cave system takes roughly 15 minutes after which the team emerges on the opposite side of SCP-2935. After cameras adjust to sunlight, the surrounding landscape is visible. 
Christ. Yeah, holy shit. Confirm what we're seeing here, lead? Yeah, uh, looks like a total lack of living vegetation. Trees, grasses, everything looks dead. Temperature readings coming in at 24 degrees Celsius, sound right? Affirmative. It's pretty pleasant. Cloudy, but not a lot of wind. Understood. Go ahead and proceed. Team, look for any housing. Is this the area we just left? We're trying to confirm that. Can you identify anything nearby? If we go up this ridge, there should be a road there. The one we came in on. Let's head that way. Team moves up nearby ridge. Yep, that's the road. Command. Hard to say for certain yet, but preliminary observation points to this being the same locality as our side of the cave. Understood. Proceed with caution. Understood. Team moves north of the nearby road. After roughly two kilometers of travel, team encounters a farmhouse. Two cars sit outside. Command. There's a house over here. Gonna go check it out. Understood. Team lead. Have Underwood set up the broadcast relay you've got. We want to try to respond to that signal. Got that, Command. I'll set it up now. Alright, let's move in. Team moves to the front door of the farmhouse. The door is unlocked, front parlor is vacant, and Agent Kale confirms that power still works within the structure. Agents move for the kitchen. Jesus Christ, what? Three adult corpses, two female and one male, are seated at a table within the kitchen. A fourth corpse, a male child, lays nearby. Command. You can see this? We can. Can you confirm life signs on any of those individuals? I can. The adult male is dead, and the female to his right, and to his left, and the child also dead. This had to be pretty recent. No signs of decomp. This is pretty fucked up. There is a newspaper on the table. April 19, 2016. Hendricks County Flyer. Command, can you confirm the headline? One moment, team. Dinner, look. Chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans. Confirming that headline. It's accurate with that newspaper on that date. What the fuck? It's stale, but there's no… Wall clock says the date is April 28, 2016. That's today. Same time, too. 0945. Same as my time. How long have they been here? Boss, look. The food. What about it? It's covered in dust. They… they are too. They've been here for a while, but the food, it's all stale, but it's not rotten. That chicken should have been covered in mold by now, but there's nothing, see? Even the potatoes. Yeah, I see it. Team, we want to get some samples. Some of that food, samples from the individuals in the room. Hair, skin, fluids, if you can get them. Any electronics in the room? There's a laptop on a desk in the next room, a smartphone in that woman's pocket, let me… yeah, battery's dead. Collect it. See if there's anything else a note nearby, and get back outside. We don't want to keep you over there for too long until we know more about that environment. Agent Kell collects biological samples from the corpses, as well as from the food on the table. Agent Juno surveys the rest of the home. Agent Devon moves to the living room and turns on a television. TV works. Just flipping around, there's not a whole lot other than test signals. Fuck me. Shit. Boss, come here. What do you got? I think it's the Home Shopping Network. Look. Television shows the set of the Home Shopping Network. Two individuals are on screen, one laying near an empty chair and the other facing the camera directly. Neither individual is moving. Backdrop has been burned. Automatic fire suppression system seems to have been triggered, and red emergency lights flash on screen. Marquee at the bottom of the screen scrolls as usual. Date reads, April 28, 2016. Alright, yeah, let's get out of here. Kale, come on, we're moving. Team leaves the house and rendezvous with Agent Underwood, who is finishing setting up the broadcast relay. After an additional 15 minutes, MTF-E-13 returns to SCP-2935 insertion point. Before returning, Agent Kale collects samples of nearby vegetation for study. You know what I just realized, boss? What's that? It's summer in the Midwest. Do you feel like anything is missing? What do you mean? Listen, there's nothing. No birds, no insects, no car noise, nothing. Just the wind. It's so goddamn quiet. End log. Note, at the conclusion of this mission, team returned to the SCP-2935 access point. However, 
team was then given instructions to stay within SCP-2935 and establish a forward camp, and await additional members of MTF-E-13. Exploratory Mission 2935.2 Codename Overland Mission Abstract To gain access to a Foundation site, Site-81, and attempt to retrieve information from the Foundation server therein, and establish a forward camp there. Assigned Task Force Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13 Manifest Destiny 16 Members Additional Information The following is a transcript of audio and video recordings captured by MTF-E-13. The 16-man recovery team, led by Agents Juno and Roy, were given instructions to commandeer functional vehicles within SCP-2935 and reach Site-81. Extraneous and non-pertinent dialogue has been removed. For full records, please contact the Site-81 Administration. Begin Log Extraneous dialogue removed. Team locates several vehicles and begin to move south towards Site-81. Main roadways are navigable, due to few vehicles being on them at the time of the aforementioned total death of all life forms within SCP-2935. Several fires are visible from the highway, including three downed jetliners. Examination of crash sites show a recurring theme. All inhabitants seem to lose consciousness at the same time. As a result of this, there are also few vehicle-on-vehicle -vehicle collisions, as most of the vehicles stop simultaneously. Upon reaching Bloomington, MTF-E-13 split into two separate teams, one led by Agent Roy, which would move directly to Site-E-1, and another, led by Agent Juno, which would attempt to access the off-site deep storage server bank. For the purposes of this log, Agent Juno's team logs are omitted. Information gathered from their excursion can be found in Addendum 2935.3. Agent Roy's team approached Site-81 main access point beneath the Lake Monroe Reservoir Dam. Access elevator is confirmed operational, and the team descends to the entry level. Roy Yeah. I was wondering. I know you guys were on assignment, but I think I was on site on the 19th. I was thinking the same thing. I was on site that day, too. You think we're in here? We'll find out soon enough. I spent the entire night in the weapons lab with Foss in Morocco. It's right inside. You guys hear that? Hear what? Exactly. Shouldn't we be hearing a breach alarm? Not necessarily. Breach alarms are automated, but only if any of the containment cells trigger it. Otherwise, they have to be executed manually. Somebody had to have gotten to the office to start the emergency broadcast. It was an automated response. If I had to wager, it was probably triggered by vital monitors going flat. Vital monitors can trip the emergency response? Not anyone by itself, but a lot of them could. Here we are. Team departs elevator. Primary access gate to Site-81 is visible. All lights continue to function. Lockdown status is visually confirmed. Keller, get that door open. Careful, everyone. Agent Keller interfaces with access console. Lockdown status is rescinded, and the main gate opens. Team moves through check-in area. Coast is clear. Alright, boys. Let's check the front offices first. Head right. Team enters Site-81 front offices. We got bodies over here. Yeah, we should expect a lot of that. Anybody recognize them? I mean, they're really dehydrated, but that's Desiree Clark, and Max Westminster, John Cabin over there, this one is Alyssa Watson, they're all staffed at 81. And probably working that day, too. Anyone know what time they mark off their calendars in the office? Not until first shift shows up, 8 a.m. local. Makes sense. Last checkoff is April 19th. Keller, patch into the system again and try to find out what triggered the emergency broadcast. Ullman, you and Indigo go check the break room over there. See if… I don't know. Boss? Sorry, shit. I wasn't expecting this. Not like this, anyway. I thought it would be messier. Breaches usually are, but this is… clean. I mean, they're pretty obviously corpses, but they're clean. No blood, slight post-mortem excretions, but it's all dried up at this point. Think it was a disease? Let's get some samples. Swab surfaces, use Indigo's kit to check for microbes. Juno's boy found a house without a trace of them, and Command wants to know if that's consistent. Be careful not to contaminate any services you're collecting from. Keep your suits on. Don't de-glove, etc. Right, let's move. Radio in if you find anything. Will do. Agents Omen and Indigo move to break room. Several other corpses are discovered during examination of the area. 
Agent Keller interfaces again with the Site-81 control system. Agents Ollie, Strait, and Daniels leave front office to collect samples from nearby cafeteria. Got it. What's it say? Looks like the system was triggered at 0400 hours during a routine vitals check. Apparently there was a malfunction, or rather the system thought there was a malfunction. All the vitals transmitters have stopped responding since the last check. That doesn't throw up a breach alarm? No, I don't think so. It would probably ping maintenance first, and then system command, and then site command? If nobody responded, it would probably trigger a message of 17, and if that went ignored, maybe Overwatch command? After those all timed out, it dropped into the automated failsafe, locked down the site and began broadcasting for help. Then it waited. Waited for what? A response from another site, or literally anybody on staff. I think even level 1s can rescind timeout lockdowns. Hypothetical, though. I've never seen it used like that. So nobody came calling. Nobody but us a couple days later. What about the AIADs? Alexandra has patched into the site, isn't she? Maybe they're still here. Good point. Pauses while interacting with Terminal. There we go. Alexandra.AIC is currently running. That's good. I'll wake her up. Pauses again. Alexandra, can you hear me? No response. Alexandra, this is James Keller. Are you awake? Try the text interface. Interfaces with Terminal again. Nothing. It says the program is still running, but no response at all. I'll try… Huh. Nothing from Thorn either. They've all gone quiet. That's odd. Will us being here wake the other sites up since we rescinded 81's lockdown? Assuming they're all in the same lockdown as this one, maybe. No doubt some of them have protocols that require somebody to be on site to break a lockdown. I know Site 27 does, but they've got a pretty substantial Keter wing. Of course, we could get the Overwatch and unlock them that way. I know they can remotely rescind security measures at all the sites. Do you know where Overwatch is? No, do you? No? Hey boss, we… we're… uh… Where are you, Ullman? We're in the weapons lab. Ah. Uh, we could just collect samples and lock up after. No, I want to see it. We'll be right there. Agents Roy and Keller move to Site 81 Weapons Lab. Agents Ullman and Indigo stand just inside the door. Let's have a look. Boss, we… It's not me in there. I'm me. You think I'm worried about what happens inside of an anomaly? We've all seen all kinds of crazy shit, places that mess with your head or whatever. Seeing my own corpse isn't going to ruin my day. Team enters Weapons Lab. Agents Morocco and Foster laying near a lab bench. The corpse of Dr. Rogers is collapsed near the doors of the firing range. Room is otherwise empty, though covered in dust. Where is it? Agent Ullman leads team to the door of the firing range. Inside the range is empty, except for a single corpse at the far end of the room laying on the floor. We've collected samples and I got a chance to look at a few under a scope. 100% cell death at every single one. We'll have to get these back to Bio in order to do a more thorough investigation, but never see anything like it. Yeah, we will. Agent Roy pauses over the corpse of Agent Roy. He reaches down and turns the corpse over, revealing the firearm that Agent Roy had been testing. They're obviously not rotten or anything. You can barely even smell them. None of the biological processes that break down a body after death seem to have kicked in because, well, somewhere along the line there stopped being biological processes. They're just dried out now. I see that. I remember this. I was only testing this for a little while. They'll be able to find it on security footage, nail down what time this all happened, see if it's consistent with everything else. Right. Okay, so we should probably check on our senior staff. I think Dr. Atkins likes to get to bed by 9, so he'll probably be in his quarters. We're already there. He's gone. The rest of them are too. Dr. Hamilton, Dr. Love, Dr. Karsten, Dr. Mann was out in the hall. I think he was in town for that seminar on the 19th. They're just like all the rest of them, totally undisturbed otherwise. Saves us that trip, I guess. Keller, get into that terminal. See if we can access the containment wings. I want to make sure there's nothing in here that… I mean, nothing that can get out, I guess. Can do. Agent Keller moves to a nearby terminal. Agent Indigo collects samples from the corpse of Agent Roy. Elsewhere, Agents Strait, Ollie, and Daniels examine the corpses of the Site-81 senior staff, collecting samples as necessary and taking artifacts for local observation. You guys get the feeling we're getting mind-wiped after we get back from this? Why? 
This has to be a huge breach of informational security, right? I mean, hell, I could go look at Atkins' sock drawer and tell you whether he prefers boxers or briefs. Who knows what else we could get into, accidentally or otherwise. Senior staff doesn't have as much functional knowledge of the skips at their site, believe it or not. The important stuff is locked down on the network, and the really important stuff is kept on vinyl somewhere. Regardless, you don't need to go snooping through his journal or anything. Actually, I take that back. If you come across a journal, pick it up. Wouldn't hurt. Amnestics hurt. You won't know either way. I'm in, boss. Looks like… Everything should be clear, though we'll have to access a handful manually. I can't open them up from here. Should be pretty straightforward and… Yeah? Sort of. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It's an encrypted security warning, but it wasn't triggered automatically. Somebody would've had to put it here. When was it posted? About three days ago, so definitely after our projected date. Could very well be a glitch or something, but… But? It's not likely. These kind of things just don't show up. Too many failsafes. The system won't throw up an encrypted message unless it's absolutely necessary. Or somebody put it there. Keller pauses. Video and audio recording equipment cuts out briefly. Right? Right. Log it. Transmit it back to Juno's team. Have them relay it local side. See what they can make of it. Sure. Just received a message from them. Looks like they finished up. Says we're gonna roll our way here in a bit. Alright, let's head downstairs then. See what the skips have been up to. Team assembles outside of staff dormitories. Team moves to lower level access elevator. Team arrives at first containment level. Wits about you, boys. I feel like something is watching us. I feel it too. Doesn't feel right. There's something else in here. It's just the seven of us. Get your head straight. Let's move. Team begins to check safe class containment cells. SCP-2151, that big fleshy thing. Get that door open. Agents open the door. There, in the corner. Is it moving? It looks like it's moving. It's just the fucking light. Look, it's all dried out. Agent Indigo examines SCP-2151-1A. Yeah, this one is gone. Check that chamber. The ring should be in there. They're in here. They're all tarnished, though. This one is rusted, though. Bag them. Let's move on. What's next? That displacement chamber is at the end of the hall. We should check that next. The ghost girl's in there. Let's see. Wait. This cell is lit up, too. Doesn't have a designation tag on it. Fuck. Can you smell that? Is it coming from this room? Smells like death. God, that's strong. Can you get that door open, Keller? Hang on. Er, it's acting up. I think it's jammed. Probably a malfunction. Open the window. It's not jammed. Ollie opens window. Oh fuck, that one's decomposed. Christ alive, you're right. Why is it so much different? Who is that? They've got on a jacket. Hang on. Oh man, Keller, that's you. You're sure? Agent number 1703. Yeah, the name badge is, uh, covered, but you can see the ID number on the other sleeve, see? The fuck happened to you? I am… I'm actually not sure. I definitely wasn't on site on the 19th or 20th. That's really weird. We'll come back to it. Let's keep going. Team moves down to SCP-2996's containment cell. Isn't this that skip that… Yep. Did they ever get that resolved? No. Not as far as I know. Agent Straight opens the chamber door. Fuck. Is the displacement chamber still functional? Looks like it. So what's that over the inside of the chamber? If I had to guess, I'd say that's the ghost girl. Did she explode? Maybe had an adverse reaction to dying twice? Can we get the chamber open? I'd advise against it. Our suits aren't rated for whatever's in there. You should see the monstrosities they have to wear when they go in to clean this thing. Fair enough. Let's keep looking. Team continues to check containment cells, all with similar results. All biological anomalous entities are confirmed to have perished, while non-biological artifacts or entities have become inert. This continues for an additional hour. Something just occurred to me, boss. Yeah. Did you get that memo a few months ago? About them moving that skip to 19? The lizard? Yeah, I was assigned to that job. It passed through 81 on the way there? It did. Was only there a few days. Wait, what lizard? Which days? Downstairs, come on. Team moves the lowest containment level. Agent Keller rescinds lockdown stats on the containment wing. Most cells are rated for Euclid and Keter class entities, but are empty. They moved the lizard here, and didn't tell site staff? 
Only essential personnel. Staff tends to get nervous. <laughs> Wonder why. Quiet. It'd be just around this quarter. There. Team faces a containment cell. Green indicator light is lit, indicating that the containment cell is active. Get the door, killer. Hey boss, hang on. If we open that door and it's still, you know, the way it usually is, then… we're fucked, I know. Motions to Keller. Agent Keller opens security door. Team enters containment cell. Within the cell is a large steel container. A tank of acid sits above the tank, as do several other containment-oriented machines. There's a door over here. Roy, we… Agent Roy opens the door to the container. I… how… is… The corpse of SCP-682 is visible within the chamber. Entity displays no signs of life. That's impossible. That's fucking impossible. There's no way. Agent Indigo approaches the corpse and proceeds to examine it. After a short time, he steps back. Yeah, it's dead. Team remains silent for a moment. Agent Ollie runs his hands over his head. You know, I'm suddenly feeling weird about this place too, boys. Let's get topside. Do you want me to collect some samples? It can wait. Team returns to the surface. Little is discussed on the way. Team rendezvous with Agent Juno's acquisition team. Both teams dispatch automated drones to the SCP-2935 access site with collected artifacts and information for local analysis. End log. Exploratory Mission 2935.3 Codename 19 Mission Abstract The travel to and ascertain the condition of Site-19 within SCP-2935. Assigned Task Force Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13 Manifest Destiny 16 members Additional information the following is a transcript of audio and video recordings captured by MTF-E-13. The 16-man recovery team, led by Agents Juno and Roy, were given instructions to extend their mission with an SCP-2935 and travel to Site-19. Begin Log Due to a technical issue with the recording equipment used by the MTF-E-13 team, all but one recorder failed to transmit to the broadcast relay. The remaining recorder, belonging to Agent Keller, continued to intermittently transmit audio only during the entire duration of the six-day expedition. After the first day, Command was able to relay with Agent Keller and inform him of the state of the transmitters. It is believed that Agent Keller received this message, although not certain as Agent Keller made no attempts during the mission to attempt to repair the transmitters. The following are excerpts of Agent Keller's audio transmissions. Southwest of here. Hang on. There we go. There are a lot of system messages in here. Looks like a lot of sites were trying to automatically contact 19 for assistance. I think some of these sites I haven't even heard of. That one might even be… same as the transmitters of 81. Yeah, but this one doesn't do an hourly check. Just pings them all every few seconds. 0113 hours. So that would be 0313 Eastern Standard Time. That fits in our projected timetable. Power failure. There's nobody down there to change the fuel cells, so I'll probably just shred them and wait for new ones. No lights until then. Not the right kind of engineer, sorry. Should be one down the hall. Yeah, he's dead. I assume since I'm still standing here, it's not working anymore. All you have to do is touch it. Bag it. Throw a sticker on it. Let them know the amulet won't do anything to them. Hang on. Doors up. I think that used to be Dr. Sumerian. Over here is Agent Strait say, that was a bad place to stand. Understatement of the year. I'm having trouble getting… our connection isn't great down here. Broken. Just like the mask was earlier. <laughs> no, you can blink, it's fine. Talking to self. Hello, SCP-079? Are you awake? Nothing. That answers that. What were you expecting? Drones here. I'm going to go send it back to the access point. It'll just be a minute. Several minutes of Agent Keller quickly typing at a keyboard. Unlike previous transmissions, no other individuals can be heard in the background. Just checking to see if there are any other messages we should know about. No. Nothing out of the ordinary. We're good to push on. At least you looked good. Man with face down at the bottom of a flight of stairs. They're all dead. Every single one of them. How haven't you figured this out yet? We're not on a goddamn recovery mission. We're not here to rescue anyone. There's nobody to rescue. Our evidence indicates that everyone… No, everyone. Everyone is dead. Everyone and everything. 100% of Foundation sites reporting the same transmitter malfunction. 100% of Foundation sites in lockdown. Not just here, 
all over the world. There's no bunker they could have gotten to. No, because it was everybody. But this isn't our reality, it's somebody else's. Ours is… it's fine. Nothing happened to ours. That's the power core ejecting the spent fuel rods. Lights out. It must have triggered an emergency breach protocol. I can't. The door is locked. Juno, I just can't magic it open. I'm sorry, I'll try to get something out. Hey Command, this is Keller. The, uh, the on-site nuke at 19 got tripped. We're locked in down here. And, and Kale wants to tell you, Anita, that he loves her, and Daniels has family in Florida. Just let them know he's alright. That you're gonna be alright. Roy has kids. He says, you get it. No, it just means the loudspeaker lost power. We're done. I'm… Transmission cuts out suddenly. End log. Exploratory Mission 2935.4 Codename Emptiness Mission Abstract to utilize an automated drone to assess the situation of the SCP-2935 reality at large, as well as recon with the MTF-E-13 team at Site-19. Assigned Task Force. Not available. One automated drone. Additional information. The following is a transcription of the audio and video recorded by an automated Foundation drone, SKF-1951, launched by Site-81 personnel at the SCP-2935 access point. The planned mission was to use the drone to gather information about SCP-2935, as well as to contact MTF-E-13 and retrieve artifacts and data collected by the team. Begin log. Drone moved from access point onto nearby road, which it uses as a runway for takeoff. Drone ascends to an altitude of 3 kilometers. From this height, the surrounding area is clearly visible. The entire region is completely devoid of all forms of biological life. Many trees have collapsed, likely due to high winds, and large drifts of sand and dirt are beginning to form along roadways and houses. To the west, a storm system is forming, moving east. The drone turns east towards Indianapolis. As previously confirmed by MTF-E-13, US Highway 70 is mostly empty of vehicle traffic, save for the occasional semi-trailer. Several large fires have broken out across the dried vegetation and buildings in nearby towns. In the distance, the Indianapolis International Airport is visible, with several other large fires nearby, likely due to downed planes. A large pillar of smoke obscures the camera briefly, and after passing it, it's confirmed to have originated from a downed Southwest Airlines 737 jetliner. On approach to Indianapolis, the city appears relatively unscathed. Several small fires appear to have broken out, but have either burned out or been put out by rain. One apartment building on the near west side appears to have collapsed, but most other structures remain intact. Drone turns north towards Site-19. Passing over the central north of Indiana reveals much of the same. Dead vegetation, dirt and sand drifts, and the corpses of animals and livestock at area farms. Occasionally a human corpse is visible, though many likely remain within their homes. Camera cuts out. Command is unable to re-establish link with drone, although this is not unexpected. Drone continues to fly autonomously towards Site-19, with the communications likely disrupted by the storm. Video link re-established. Drone now in the middle of thunderstorm, off heading slightly, lightning strikes nearby and camera cuts out again. After half an hour, video link is re-established. Drone begins to descend. GPS determines that drone is nearing Site-19, roughly 35 kilometers northwest of Lansing, Michigan. To the far northwest, a large fire is visible. Below, another jetliner is visible, having crashed into Spartan Stadium at Michigan State University. A fire burns on the Red Cedar River, just north of the university. Drone begins final descent, closing in on the Site-19 compound. After clearing credentials with Site-19, the drone lands in the northeast airstrip, near the staff dormitory access building. The drone then transmits its coordinates to the MTF-E-13 team, deploys solar panels and powers down. Five hours pass. Drone is activated by Agent Keller, who proceeds to load a parcel of collected artifacts into the underside of the drone. Agent Keller's radio is heard receiving communications from his team, although the messages are unintelligible. Lastly, Agent Keller loads the drone with a large amount of recovered data from a recovery team hard drive. Agent Keller then crouches in front of primary observation camera. The agent reaches forward to clean the camera off with the back of a glove and then stares into the camera. I don't have any answers. I don't think there are any. I'll do this one thing and hope that fixes it. Seal it shut. You've got to lock it in here with us. I'm sorry. 
Agent steps away from drone and returns to access building. Ten minutes later, drone departs for SCP-2935 access point. Roughly two hours into flight, drone detects a large explosion in the direction of Site-19, mushroom cloud indicative of an on-site nuclear device being detonated is visible on the horizon. Return trip otherwise uneventful. Drone recovered on local site of SCP-2935 without further incident. Artifacts and data moved to Site-81 for investigation. End log. Addendum 2935.3 Recovered data and artifacts from MTF E-13 missions. Note, the following is a list of artifacts recovered by the MTF E-13 team on its three separate missions in the SCP-2935. Some artifacts omitted. See Site-81 Research Department for a full list of recovered items. For information about data recovered from SCP-2935, please see the additional section at the end of this addendum. Artifact Acquisitions Artifact, Recovery Site, Description, Additional Information Sample of Various Vegetation SCP-2935 Access Point All specimens were severely dried out and confirmed as having no remaining living cells. Not available. Several various insect carcasses, near SCP-2935 access point. All specimens were dried out and confirmed as having no remaining living cells. Not available. A copy of the Hendricks County Flyer, dated April 19, 2016. Gauntlet House. Covered in dust, no signs of microbes or other living biological materials. Not available. Hair and skin samples from an adult male. Gauntlet House. Total cell death. Not available. Hair and skin samples from an adult female. Gauntlet House. Total cell death. Not available. Hair and skin samples from an adult female. Gauntlet House. Total cell death. Not available. Hair and skin samples from a male child. Gauntlet House. Total cell death. Not available. Cell phone collected off adult female corpse. Gauntlet House. Samsung Note 5 smartphone in white. Last communication sent from phone on April 19, 2016, at 2041 hours Eastern Standard Time. Message reads, Are you guys still planning on playing cards tonight? I have Steven, but he'll probably be asleep soon. Various foodstuffs. Gauntlet House. Dried out and covered in dust, but no evident signs of decay. Analysis showed no signs of microbial life throughout any of the recovered food items. Not available. Desk Calendar. Site 81. The desktop calendar is sitting at the front office of Site-81. Last marked off day is April 19, 2016. Covered in a fine layer of dust. Not available. Skin samples collected from various Site-81 front office staff members. Site-81. All samples confirmed as experience in total cell death. No microbial life remaining. Not available. Various firearms collected from Site-81 firing range. Site-81. Traces of oils from human hands, but no residual microbial life forms. Not available. Flesh sample from SCP 21511A. Site 81. Flesh sample unresponsive. Total cell death confirmed after further analysis. Not available. Leather bound journal belonging to Director Atkins. Site 81. Matches Director Atkins' personal journal to that date. No inconsistent entries noted. Moved to storage. SCP-2151 A and B Site-81 Both items are severely corroded. After further testing, both instances are confirmed to be no longer be anomalous. Both instances moved to storage. Skin and hair samples from Site-19 staff Site-19 Samples consistent with other previous samples. Not available. SCP-963 Site-19 Artifact is inert. Instance of Dr. Jack Bright that the artifact was recovered from was consistent with other corpses found within SCP-2935. A smashed wristwatch belonging to Dr. Darius Hemsworth. Site-19. Wristwatch no longer operational. Apparently ceased operation at 0313 hours Eastern Standard Time after falling to the ground with its owner. Various pieces of concrete and rebar covered in green and red paint. Site-19. Artifact is inert. The origin of this artifact is uncertain. Data Acquisitions Data Source An automated emergency response signal originating from Site-81, led to the discovery of SCP-2935. This is an automated emergency broadcast from the SCP Foundation and your national government. One or more of our sites is experiencing a communication breakdown, likely due to a containment breach of unknown magnitude. All citizens are ordered to stay in their homes as the containment teams work to secure the breach. 
This message will broadcast from April 20, 2016 until… Message cuts off suddenly. Data source. A log of distress pings originating from Site-81. 0313. Massive transmitter error. Requesting maintenance. 0314. Massive transmitter error. Requesting maintenance. 0315. Massive transmitter error. Possible breach of containment. Requesting maintenance. 0316. The Site-81 command. Massive transmitter error. Please advise. 0321. The Site-81 command. Massive transmitter error. Please advise. 0326. The Site-81 command. Massive transmitter error. Beginning lockdown procedures. Site will lock down in 10 minutes. 0331. Site will lock down in 5 minutes. 0335. Site will lock down in 1 minute. 0336. Site lockdown complete. Please advise. 0400. The Site 17 Command. Site experiencing massive transmitter error. Lockdown procedure initiated. Please advise. 0500. To Overwatch Command. Multiple sites unresponsive, experiencing massive transmitter error. Lockdown procedure initiated. Please advise. Data Source. Site 19 interior and exterior security camera footage. Footage shows the exact moment during which the SCP-2935 event took place. At exactly 0313 hours Eastern Standard Time, footage shows all members of Site staff on camera, as well as all surrounding flora and fauna outside of Site-19, suddenly dying. No other phenomenon are evident in this footage. Data Source Encrypted security warning recovered from Site-81. Decryption of source revealed a hidden audio log file. Transcript of that file is below. Alright, here we are. My name is, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I am on, was on staff at 81. If you're hearing this, then you probably got some idea what the deal is here, so I don't need to explain the Foundation to you. But this, everything else? I mean, it's pretty self-evident, isn't it? Fuck me. As of my recording this, it is 2136 hours Eastern Standard Time on April 26th. I managed to get back into 81, even with this lockdown bullshit that got triggered, and I guess this is it. I wish I had an explanation. I, If I didn't still bleed, I would think I was dreaming. I've had dreams that I was dreaming, but I wake up and I'm still here. Still here, alone, and everyone is gone. They sent me to check the signal they had picked up near Joppa, just off of 70. Quick little exploratory mission. I was the closest. I pop in there and find this cave, and on the other side is the world I just left, but… But it's this one. This is the world I ended up in. The grass, the birds, things dropping out of the skies and dark things floating in the water. People everywhere, lying where they stood. And the silence. God, the silence. Not even not even birds or, or bugs, just wind and nothing else. I came back to report on what I had seen and… I don't have any answers. I don't think there are any. I don't even have the right words to say. This world is different from the one I saw in the cave. People are moved around. The date is different. Things are different. Because it's my world. This is the one I left. This is… My family is here and my friends, but now… It's all gone. Everything is dead. There's no evil magic. There's no supernatural stars. There's no futuristic ray gun or false vacuum device or nothing. None of those things mattered. Nothing we did mattered. It's all gone. Something… Something must have been in that cave. Something must have followed me out of there. Needed me to go in there. Needed me to bring it out. Let it loose. Let it do to my world what it did to… to that. Maybe it's me. Maybe I was the reason. Maybe I am death. If it was in there, and I brought it back, then I am death. I've got myself in a containment cell. Jammed the goddamn door shut. I'm going to put a bullet between my eyes. Everyone else is dead. Watch one more. You know what occurs to me, if you're listening to this? You're death, too.